Interview of Tyler Newcomb, segment three. Three, two, one. Welcome back, Khalil and Nick Phillips, with you with another segment of The Advocate. And uh, in these next two segments, we're going to be talking about uh, basically something that we're going to be hearing a lot about as we approach November of this year, and that's the 50th anniversary of the assassination of President Kennedy. Uh, we've talked about this subject before on the show, and tonight we have with us uh, uh, an author of a book known as Murder from Within, and we have uh, uh, Tyler Newcomb. Tyler, how are you tonight? I'm good, Nick. How are you? Great. Uh, Tyler, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Oh, my goodness. Well, the weather must be beautiful out there, is it not? I uh, today it happens to be. It was pretty lousy a week ago. My goodness. Can you tell our listeners, what is your relationship to the Kennedy assassination, and, and how are you interested in it? Okay. Uh, the story goes like this. My father who has the same name as mine, Fred T. Newcomb. I go by the middle name, Tyler. Um, he actually did the research on the book and, pub- and self-published a manuscript in 1974 after making numerous trips to Dallas and interviewing about 50 witnesses. And in 1970, he had an epiphany. And f- pretty much the book outlines what happened in, in his view. And he sent 100 copies to Congress and uh, two or three of the senators, Senator Barry Goldwater, wrote back that it was very well-documented, meticulous, but it was also, quote, mind-shattering, the conclusions, and probably shouldn't be revealed in his lifetime. Um, and so the, the book never got published. Now, at, what, at the time, was your father an author, or, or what was his role? No, he was an expert in photography. He was mm-hmm. His, his uh, expertise was in graphics and photography, and that's how he got interested in it, and he wrote some articles on, on the uh, an analysis of the Oswald uh, picture of him holding the rifle on the cover of Life magazine and showing how it was uh, phonied up. So the book Murder from Within uh, is based uh, a, a lot in what work your father did. Yes, it is. He, he wrote the book with a, with a co-author who was a librarian who fact-checked everything for him and edited the book, Perry Adams. And my sister and I decided uh, a year, two years ago, that we want to get the book published before my father died, and we succeeded in doing that. Three months before he passed away, he actually held one of the first copies in his hand, and he was very happy. Oh, how how pleasing uh, to him! I'm sure that was. Uh, oh, yeah. how, how old was your dad when he passed away? He died at at the age of about 84. Mm-hmm. Oh my. Well, it's uh, it's really sad to lose anyone, but at least you got this done for him. Yes, and, uh, it was a monumental effort on our part. Now, uh, again, what, what haven't we heard about the Kennedy assassination? Now, most of us uh, have heard that, um, obviously, Lee Harvey Oswald uh, shot uh, President Kennedy in Dallas, Texas, right. from the, uh, the Dallas City School d- book, the book Depository, yeah. and that uh, he was an ex-Marine, and he had a high-powered rifle with a scope, and he... He got off a number of shots, and there was he was one shooter, and uh, acting alone, mm-hmm. and uh, that it was just one of those things. Uh, couldn't be prevented because uh, how do you protect someone from one person who they didn't know about? Uh, and I know we had Dr. Cyril Weck, who was also um, uh, has been involved in the Kennedy assassination stories over the years, and uh, that. Uh, his theory was there were two shooters, but uh, what your father has uh, unveiled really takes a different twist on everything. Uh, tell us, what, what did your father do and, and what did he find out? Well, when he went to Dallas, he interviewed um, four of the, no, six of the Dallas police officers that were right there, and he found two very, very interesting things that sort of uh, turned his head around on this whole thing. The Motorcycle officer B.J. Martin, which mm-hmm. I have on tape, um, said during the shooting he could smell gunpowder. And from the said, book depository? No, he, he <laughs> was ten feet from the limousine. All he right. said, "You you don't smell the gunpowder burning unless the shooter is real close." Of I'm course, not, yeah. And not and not talking yards, we're talking feet. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then he talked to three motorcycle officers that were guarding the limo at the hospital, and there was a bullet hole, through and through bullet hole in the windshield, which disappeared when that limousine got back to Washington. So what he started to 
suspect was the secret service was was it took a wasn't just incompetent but was complicit and the crime scene for this event was not dealey plaza the crime scene was the car itself which was the getaway car and usually at a crime scene the police wrap tape around the area and nobody can touch anything in it but the crime scene was the car and it was under the control of the secret service so what dad's theory is and it goes all the way back to rome is that with the praetorian guards uh assassinated the emperor Hmm. and on up to napoleon who we now know was slowly poisoned to death with arsenic everybody thought he was he died of natural causes and even up to recently indira gandhi was killed by her own two bodyguards and Anwar Sadat was killed by his security. So it's a common theme around the world, in world history, that the security, if you can penetrate the security, uh, you have a great chance of, uh, of assassinating the leader. Well, well let, let's start uh, with Oswald. Uh, is there any disagreement that Oswald did take shots at the president? I, no, th- th- there is a disagreement, yeah. That, that rifle up there, was was found with no fingerprints on it. No fingerprints, and there were three spent shells. Jesse Curry, the chief of, of the police at Dallas, in his book said they couldn't put him up there with a rifle in his hands. There was no solid information, either eyewitness or other, that he was actually up there. But were there any witnesses then who actually saw uh, the flash of, of the gunfire from the window of the depository? No, they, they, they saw a man up there holding a gun. There was a gun up there, that's for sure. But uh, Luke Mooney went up there pretty much uh, within minutes and said, and was asked by the Warren Commission, do you smell gunpowder? And he smelled no gunpowder up there. But they did smell it down in the street, 10 witnesses, most of them in the motorcade. So the shooter was in the motorcade, according to those that, that smelled the gunpowder. Well, what about the uh, the bullets and the forensics from the shells? Uh, what did your father find yeah, about that? If, if here, here it is. The, if, the, if the security is also the assassin, and the assassin is also in control of the evidence, then you can plant evidence. And that's how that bullet ended up there on the stretcher. Well, the, the bullet uh, was shown to be from that rifle that was up on that That is correct. Floors, right? But, yeah, but that, that rifle and that bullet could have been planted in mm-hmm. advance. That bullet could have been fired from that rifle. And also, that shell could have gone into the pocket of some agent who dropped it on the... Uh, everybody thought it was a plant because there was no blood on it. When, when your father passed away and he had the book given to him as he was in his last days what was his belief as far as what actually happened to his uh, actually to his last breath what did he think happened out there and what daily center it, it, it remained the same for the past 40 years when he came across this theory that the secret service killed the president for, to benefit the vice president Johnson who lusted for the presidency wanted to be president and was uh, pretty much the uh, behind the whole thing uh, the, the the question of the secret service doing this is is, is new um, most most people think uh, maybe a CIA agent or the Russians or the mafia or the anti Castro Cubans were behind it and there was a shooter on the grassy knoll I stood right where Zapruder Abraham Zapruder was filming right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right on the knoll I looked to my right, and I could see all the way up and down the picket fence there. It was bright as day up there. If anybody was firing a rifle up there, he would have been caught. He would have been seen. He may have been photographed. And um, But it, nobody was seen or captured on film firing. And there were 400 eyewitnesses there in Dealey Plaza. The people that did it were in the car and left. That was the getaway car. What well, was the actual p- presidential limo? Yes. Well, we know who is at the car. Do you have, have has your father identified specific people who uh, they believed uh, actually did the shooting? And before yeah, you even we actually interviewed him, well, hold, William Greer. Well, hold on to that thought. We're going to take okay. a short break. We'll come back and we're going to talk about William Greer.
And uh, we're talking to Tyler Newcomb. Uh, he uh, is the son of Fred Newcomb, who uh, had amassed a lot of information concerning the assassination of John Kennedy. And uh, they published a new book called Murder from Within. And it's uh, the subtitle is Lyndon Johnson's Plot Against President Kennedy. So we're going to be talking about that when we return, so don't go away. We're